Today's video is sponsored by ZooV. We are deep into fall and winter is coming, so in this video I'll share 15 tips to prepare for a long winter. Here in Stockholm it's cold and we've already had some snowfall. Nothing that stayed, but we will most likely get snow that will stay later on. Temperatures can go down towards minus 15 degrees centigrade or more here in winter, so staying cozy and warm is a priority this time of year. Here's number one on my list. Make sure you have enough candles, matches, batteries, warm clothing and tasty teas. This time of year I make sure to stock my candle drawer. Longtime followers of mine remember my candle drawer from my first house and I keep that going here 15 years later. I'm not a fan of scented candles, I prefer mine neutral and white whether they're votives, tapers or battery operated. My candle drawer also holds enough matches and batteries so I won't run out for a little while. Number two on my list ties into that. Actually use those candles. Us Swedes are notorious for lighting candles even on a Monday in Monday. We don't save candles for special occasions, they're part of our everyday. I like to have battery operated candles that light up automatically all around my apartment and then I light real candles where I'm sitting down. That way, I don't have to worry about Bonus accidentally knocking one over or singeing his whiskers. Candle light is just the coziest this time of year, so use those candles and also add fairy lights and cozy lamps to create a comfy atmosphere at home. Overhead lights are banned in my apartment, those are only turned on for cleaning. Adjust your skin and hair care routine for cold weather. I have very dry skin, so I make sure to keep it moisturized in winter. Baby oil in the shower works great for me. For my hands and feet, I swear by this CeraVe in a pot. The label doesn't do it for me though, so that comes off before going in my cabinet. And winter hair care brings me to the sponsor of this video, Zuvi Halo. This time of year, as it gets colder here in Sweden, my habit of washing my hair and going straight outside while it's still damp isn't an option anymore. Using a hairdryer on my fine Scandinavian hair isn't something I wanted to do until Zuvi sent me their Zuvi Halo. This hairdryer primarily uses light instead of extreme heat to dry hair. That prevents the frizziness I would get from a regular hairdryer. It quickly dries the hair on the surface and leaves the inside cortex hydrated, which increases hair moisture, shine and smoothness. 
It can help strengthen and protect fine hair from easily breaking. The Zuvi Halo has won multiple beauty and industry awards, including Allure's Best of Beauty, and I totally understand why. My favorite attachment is the diffuser. I let my hair air dry for a little bit, and then I use the diffuser to keep my natural curls as my hair dries fully, and it's been such a game changer. I no longer need any styling products since my curls do the job of holding my clip in place, whereas before I couldn't even put my hair up on hair wash days without using hairspray. If you're looking for a gentler hair dryer, you can give it a try now. Zuvi Halo hair dryer is 25% off during the Black Friday sale. Use my code BENITA5 for an extra 5% off. Save a total of 30%. The best deal of the year is here. Seal any drafts, insulate windows, and check your weather stripping to keep your home warm and energy efficient this winter, if you're in a colder climate like I am. One of the projects in my apartment since I moved in a year ago has been to seal the floor gaps. The gaps have occurred when floor coverings were removed in the past and where the 110-year-old building has settled over the years. My priority has been to work on the exterior walls first, because that's where I can keep any draft out. I sand the baseboards and wipe off any dust both on and under. I put wide masking tape in front of the baseboard and use my rubber squeegee to make sure it doesn't go under much. Where it does go under, I cut away with a knife. That makes for easier removal after everything has been filled and painted. I use a filler that was recommended to me by the contractor who worked on my kitchen. He lives nearby in a similar age building and has used this method in his own home. I add a generous amount of filler with an old butter knife and then scrape the excess off with a squeegee. Then I sand and repeat and add two coats of paint and a light sanding in between coats. To finish off I cut along the edge with my knife so it's easier to remove the masking tape. All the exterior walls are done now but I do still have a few interior walls left to do. As for keeping my old windows as draft-free as possible, I added weather stripping last winter. This time around I just went around and checked it. All the windows were fine, but I remember the entry being chilly last winter, so I checked the front door. The exterior door weather stripping is still fine, but I will most likely switch the bottom part out sometime during winter because it's so highly trafficked and easily gets torn. I did decide to add a strip at the bottom interior door where I noticed a gap. These measures might seem small and insignificant, but they can help a lot to keep your home warmer and save you some money on your heating bill. And speaking of heating, clean your fireplace if you're lucky to have one or get your heating system serviced to make sure it's safe and ready for use. When I moved in here in November last year, I had two radiators to heat the whole apartment. There were three to begin with, but the previous owner added a balcony and during that process, the radiator that used to be under the window was removed and not replaced. I added a radiator as quick as I could, but that ended up being in March. So during winter, that corner of my apartment was chillier than I would have preferred. Now that I have it, it's so warm and cozy in there. I turn it off at night to sleep and turn it on again in the morning. We have four distinct seasons over here in Sweden, but regardless of what your weather situation is, the changing of your seasons is a good time to take inventory of your clothes. I don't have a lot of clothes and what you see is pretty much all of it, 
aside from a few pieces of outerwear and a couple of special occasion items that I keep in the basement. During the warmer months I keep my knitwear folded. During winter I prefer easier access to it though, and for me that means on a hanger. So I unfold and hang my knits. Also check that everything is still in good order. This cardigan had quite a lot of pilling going on so I used my fabric shaver on it. I'm always amazed how knits come out almost looking new after. This winter I felt I was lacking in the warmer pants department and found these corduroy ones that will fill that gap. I did a quick number on them by cutting the bottoms and skipped a hem in favor of a raw edge. They still need to go in the wash once more so the edges don't have that newly frayed look. My boots also came out of storage. I don't make a big seasonal switch over in my closet, but I make a little one, and that's my walking gear which I keep in the entryway shoe cabinet. As it gets colder, I move the warmer gear in there. That includes a long sleeve top, a hat, a scarf, warmer socks and fleece active tights. I also put my ice scrapers and reflectors in there. All set for safe winter walks, which is actually tip number seven on my list. Stay active. Embrace the season with activities like walking, ice skating, sledding or skiing. Find outdoor activities or indoor workouts to stay active during the winter months. If you enjoy decorating, this is your cue to add winter-themed decor, such as wreaths, pine cones and seasonal colors. For me, winter decor just means that I switch some thinner cotton and linen pieces around my home to woolier ones. My cotton waffle bedspread is replaced by a cozy woolly throw on my bed.
the linen cushion cover on my sofa goes in the wash and a woolly one that I sewed from an old sweater takes its place. Plan for cozy evenings in. Organize board game nights, puzzles or craft sessions with family and friends. One of the things I love most about the winter season is staying in and getting cozy with crafts and puzzles. As soon as cozy season starts, I make sure I have a puzzle going. I always start by finding as many of the edge pieces as possible and putting them together. It's an easy and satisfying start. Then I move on to sorting some of the most obvious colors and off I go. I leave the puzzle out on my dining table and anyone coming over can hop in if they want. I always use a foam core board as a base and that way I can move the whole thing if I need to use the table for something else. After I'm done I break it apart and pass it on to a friend. Another thing I enjoy is a crossword puzzle. In summer I do it on my balcony and keep it in the closet in the bedroom next to the balcony door. In winter I do it on my sofa so I pop it onto the tray underneath my sofa for easy access. Ensure your pets have warm and comfortable places to rest during the cold season. As it gets colder here, I make sure that the spots my cat Bonus enjoys are clean and warm. I don't necessarily change anything because these little spots are here for him to enjoy all year around. I just like to make sure they're clean and nice for him. His little cave with the toys gets vacuumed. I got the cave on eBay. It was a promotional item from Whiskas, so if you're looking for one, Google Whiskers Cat Head Bed. They pop up sometimes. The spots over the radiators get a good vacuum as well. Bonus really enjoys the warmth up there in winter. Stuck up on tea and coffee for those chilly evenings. I drink coffee all year round, but tend to reserve tea for fall and winter. There are so many nice shops in Stockholm and Java Tea House in my neighborhood is a favorite. It has a great selection of teas and tea paraphernalia, but is also a great shop for finding nice gifts. And that brings me to number 12 on my list of things to prepare for winter. Start planning for the holidays, gift ideas, decorations and events. I'm not going to put up a ton of decor for the holidays, but I love looking through my inspiration binder to get myself prepared. I do also love when my favorite stores bring out their holiday decor and wares. It's just such a cozy season to look forward to, even though I rarely buy anything for myself other than edibles and drinkables. This year I did make a couple of purchases already though. I found a mini version of the woolly pom-poms I got last year and loved so much. I also got me a battery operated mini string light which will hopefully cast a nice glow in my holiday decor video a bit later this season. Stay tuned for that! I 
I love the period leading up to Christmas and always try to find events that put me even more in the spirit. These types of events often sell out fast, so I make sure to book tickets well in advance. This year I'm really excited for a winter lights event at our open air museum Skansen. Can't wait to go! Bring some greenery inside to liven up your space during the winter months. I have a few plants in my apartment and they do so much to liven up my minimal spaces. The burst of green and the movement of the leaves when I pass adds a special touch. While we got access to our summer house, we noticed that the previous owner left us a huge plant. It's been at the house since, but because it needs taking care of in winter, it came home with me and will hopefully enjoy it here. Number 14 on my list of winter prep is to set up a comfy corner with cushions, blankets and a stack of books from the library for winter reading. I love curling up on my sofa with a good book. My current reads are all about restoring old houses and it feels so nice to use winter as a time to study and prepare the restoration of our summer house. If you're lucky to have some outside space, make it cute for winter. This is my first time decorating my balcony for winter, then I went for some lights and a lantern with fairy lights. I'm storing a couple of things inside for winter and covered the rest of the pots and baskets with pine clippings. I decided to leave the furniture out there but made sure to oil it first so the wood is conditioned. And those are my 15 tips. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Hey då!